For those who follow Ellen, and we'll begin with what you already know, the issue is whether or not the alignments with the sun and the earth are causing the earthquakes, mo no most notably, as you're about to see, uh, the ones in Chile, Christchurch, and Japan. Now, as has been widely noted, Jupiter and often Saturn are in these alignments. Now, this is true, and I'm showing it here, but in years past, earthquakes has never hit with such precision during this time, so we should at least ask the question, uh, especially since it appears that it's not just an increase in earthquakes. After the earthquake in Japan, the Sakurajima volcano started really acting up. The volcano in Iceland blew, and one in Chile, and uh, most recently, after a massive earthquake swarm in Ethiopia, the nearby Nabro volcano is uh, set to be doing some damage as well. So we have an increase, a serious increase in earthquakes seeming to correspond with alignments and a general increase in you know, tectonic, seismic, volcanic activity. So uh, why? This is uh, an article by NASA talking about the magnetic portals connecting the Earth to the Sun. I won't go into that now. But these magnetic portals aren't unique to the Earth and the Sun. They're pretty much shared between all celestial bodies. Now this idea of magnetism and uh, taken further to orbital resonance uh, is why Dr. Omer Basic uh, believes that these alignments have such a profound effect on, uh, on the Earth and seismicity. He himself says that it's, it's not about gravity, it's about the magnetism. It sort of goes back to the electromagnetic model which so many of our famed uh, scientists are in favor of but can't seem to prove we're just not smart enough yet uh, so something is definitely happening as this alleged comet gets closer and closer uh, why can't we see it we should be able to see it uh, according to Leonid Elenin the finder it should be easily visible with a tail nearly a million kilometers long so J. Katera, MR2 Tough, <laughs> MR2, and Terra 03, among others, uh, have decided to try to figure out why we couldn't see this comet. Now, J. Katera went in and he figured out where the comet would have been uh, when this IRAS infrared overlay shot was taken on Google Sky. Now, what we're zooming in on here is exactly where NASA claims the comet was when this shot was taken. Now we've heard that this looks like a black hole, we've heard it looks like a dwarf star, it certainly doesn't look like a comet and these beams shooting out uh, seem to indicate uh, rotation and uh, a little more than just a comet which would certainly account for uh, what we are seeing here on our planet and could account for what we're seeing on our Sun. You know if there are electromagnetic forces at work here between these celestial bodies that we're not aware of, um, you know, we just might not know. So these Ellen and alignments wouldn't be the only coincidence we've got here. Uh, this is a shot of when the comet Ellen will be closest to the sun, as you can see on the distance there. Uh, and it happens to be the same day that it crosses from the dark blue to the light blue, which means it crosses our orbital plane. Now this could be a coincidence, uh, it's very unlikely, but it happened on September 11th. This here is uh, a little fun we had with Leonid Alanen's name, uh, the alleged discoverer of the comet. Uh, if you know our videos, you've seen this before. Uh, also, an early report claims that Leonid spotted this thing out near Jupiter, uh, as you can see here, it has not been close to Jupiter at any point. Uh, it's been close to Saturn, especially as you can see there by the date. That's about when he found it. So, after all of this, there are probably more questions left to be answered than answers given. And hopefully, uh, we can rely on these guys and others to keep this going for us.